Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Clash Bash Part the Mistvale season top eight games, where this time we have Nathan and Dat Weezy going into their game two. If you didn't catch the first one, go back and check it out. But currently, we are one for Dat Weezy, zero for Nathan. And today we're going to see whether or not Benji over on Dat Weezy's side is going to be able to take on Nathan's Briar build in this wonderful, wonderful game of our Clash Bash Top 8. Let's get into it. Game 2 of this Top 8 match between Nathan and Dat Weezy is underway. Here we have Benji going against Briar in the second game of this matchup. If you missed the first one, go check that one out. But it looks like we have a more fatigue style Briar here over on Nathan's side against Benji, which we're assuming is running more of a tiger build considering the tearing Shuko and the mask of three tails and the tiger taming Kakara. Now, Benji likes to utilize a lot of those two power and lower attacks to get some good on hits. Benji's ability is that you cannot block with cards from hand against attack actions with power two or less. And he also gets an additional plus one onto his next attack action after the first one. So very, very interesting tech there from Benji. I expected to see this kind of uh, tiger based build on this. So there's a biting breeze can't be blocked by cards from hand. So they get that on hit to get the tiger. Then a tiger tame and Kakara gets to come in for plus one because they did play and this is their second attack in their their chain. So very, very good lines. Ninjas obviously like to go wide a lot. And Briar, I would expect, is supposed to try and block out most of this with very, very few amount of cards, or at least like, you know, take a little bit of damage here, but block out the more important things like the on hits. Benji has powerful on hits, much like this Wander with Purpose. Wander with Purpose kind of giving him a Katsu specialization if this does hit. So not something you'd like to see happen. So here comes the Ironhide Helm block. These Ironhide are going to be really important in this game plan because you also have Benji's other specialization, which I'm sure we'll see later on in the game, Spring Tidings. Um, it's a card that allows Benji to just draw a whole bunch of cards uh, during their turn. Very powerful stuff, but some damage gets to leak through. And now we come in simply with a Dread Scythe for three and one Arcane. The... The mode here in most cases for fatigue is swing with your weapon, deal somewhere between four to six damage with your weapon, and force cards out of your opponent's hand to make it so they can't do as many powerful things. And in this specific situation, you're going to see that a lot. Uh, you're going to have these dread sides just come in, deal one arcane unless they decide to pay into it with the tide flippers. But in most cases, one damage is not a big deal to a ninja, especially a ninja that forces their opponent to not be able to block in most of their cases. So here comes a Biting Breeze for one. This is going to go ahead and get them that Crouching Tiger, which is going to be incredibly powerful. Their next card is going to get an additional plus one on top of it. This is a Breed Anger for five, but they probably should have played a Tiger beforehand to allow it to get go again, but maybe Benji is just trying to set up. Um, not really a... Not really an understanding of why that happened there, but sometimes, you know, I, I just I just kind of watch the game and I see how things play out. Again, we've got another Dread Scythe play. This is probably a lot of what Briar is going to end up doing here. This Scar for a Scar has been in their hand for a little while now, um, at least a couple turns. And the Scar for a Scar is going to be great, but with Briar being able to block efficiently, Scar for a Scar doesn't seem to normally turn on its go again effect. If you're at, you know, it doesn't turn on its go again effect if you're at higher life than your opponent, which is currently the case. So I'm assuming that it's being saved specifically for those situations. Here comes another wander with purpose. This is the second one, the last one inside the deck. So it looks like it's going to be blocked out by an iron hide legs. And that's just a pretty simple move here. You want to make sure they're not getting those on hits. No attack reactions from Benji, no razor reflexes or anything. So they get to go ahead and pass through with that. Tiger Taming Kakara gets to go ahead and swing in here for two. Uh, obviously, the, the the first attack did not hit or anything, so uh, no additional power move here. But we're going to see whether or not these uh, these these crouching tigers or anything are going to be worth a, a dang here. 
This growl comes in for two. This one is going to give another plus one, but it also activates Spring Tidings to get another plus one from Benji's ability. So unfortunately, the Spring Tidings gets get blocked out by a card from hand, and that means that the Ironhide Gauntlet left on Briar's End is only for that next Spring Tiding. So the Fatigue Plan really working out in Briar's favor here, just poking with a little bit of Arcane every now and again, blocking efficiently as you can. Here comes another Biting Breeze, more Crouching Tigers to the Banish Zone, because that's just what we like to see. More Chain Link stuff. Uh, running the Tearing Shuko and Mask of Three Tails over on Benji's End again, that's a very powerful combo. Mask of Three Tails you can utilize pretty much whenever, as long as you've hit three times in a Chain Link. And Tearing Shuko, you just get to pop at instant speed to give a Tiger plus two. So we might be able to see that happen. Obviously, a Tiger for zero and then getting plus two is now unblockable on Benji's end. So I'd imagine a lot of leak through damage is happening here. We just had a Bittering Thorns red hit, which means that this Growl now gets to go ahead and get a plus one. And they'll get their next Crouching Tiger to also get plus one. It's a very, very good move there. And it looks like they're going to see whether or not they want to destroy the vest. They do destroy the vest to play Tiger Tame and Kakara. That means this tiger is going to be able to come in for a little bit more. And they even play the mask. So the mask comes through. Not sure whether or not they have a Spring Tidings and Arsenal there. But if they do, it's just going to get blocked out by Ironhide Gauntlet. So you're not expecting a whole lot. But I think Benji's just trying to leak as much damage as possible with these two power attacks. And you kind of have to throw the spring tidings in the situation, because if you don't do it now, then you can't guarantee to close out the game later. So there goes the spring tidings. This would have drawn Benji a ton of cards, but luckily, just simply for one resource, you can go ahead and block that out entirely. They then come in with a aspect of Tiger Soul for a whopping uh, two damage. It gets that go again. And it makes a Crouching Tiger in the Banish Zone because a yellow was played before it. So good thinking. That was a great top deck from the Mask of Three Tails. And then the Tiger Shri the Tearing Shuko just gets popped for the Crouching Tiger to come in for two more. Now, this is where that Quelling Robe comes into play. You go ahead and pay that one extra resource. You block out one of that damage. But it's not looking great for Briar because now with no armor to defend themselves and only a Scarfer Scar coming in as a clapback, with no additional resources, that Embodiment of Earth is not going to help them. Because one two-power attack, like 100 wins yellow, definitely will win the game in Benji's favor and make Dat Weezy moving on to the top eight of our Clash Bash season. What an insane game. I, I truly, Benji is just something that is incredibly hard to work around, and to try to play a fatigue build into Benji is just so difficult. You, you don't have access to a lot of things that would generally make it. I mean, the, the idea behind Ironhide use in there is very, very key to that play style. But you don't normally see a lot of Benji's try to do some insane stuff. And you can only use your armor specifically for those spring tidings or wander with purpose turns, because if you don't, you're just going to lose out on so much, you know, blocking power. Those are the only cards in Benji's deck, his specializations that are just so insanely powerful, they have to be blocked out. So you need to save your armor for it. But after being picked down little by little, especially after a really, really wide turn like that last one, it was it was difficult for for that to happen. And without any kind of Oasis respite or anything of the sort to be able to block your opponent's cards, it just didn't work out for Nathan there. And Dat Weezy moved on to the top eight of our Part the Mistville Clash Bash season. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. It was very, very wonderful. And the entire match overall, if you missed the first round, go check it out. Um, that is a super great game as well. And we're going to continue covering a whole bunch of the top eight here at the Fab Clash Hub. So thank you all so much for watching. And we'll see you all in our next game. Ooh.